Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today I want to talk about the developer deep dive, let's talk about class identity in ESO. Why is it important? There has been a lot of class identity and balance issues, so it's actually interesting to see what they will come up with. Zenimax Online Studios gameplay lead Rob Garrett shares his team's philosophies and visions for both class identity and combat in the Elder Scrolls Online. So Rob Garrett has been at the company for a little bit over a year now, I think. I've met him two, three times. Pretty cool guy. Let's see. Class identity has long been an important topic, especially in the recent months on ESO forums, in social channels and on the Dave team. And that's definitely true. This loaded term can mean different things to different people and we all can agree it's an important element in creating a satisfying combat experience. In an effort to improve how we communicate our vision for combat in ESO going forward, we thought this would be a good topic to dive into and share our perspectives. So, there has been a new combat team. I think Robo left or got booted from the company at the start of the year and then a new team took over. That's why we're seeing so many changes. So like Brian Wheeler, which used to be the PvP de developer, is now both responsible for PvP and PvE. And Gilliam, I think, that used to be a content creator that works there now, is making most of these ability changes. That's my guess. When our team uses the term class identity, we are referring to what makes the experience of playing a class feel unique from other classes. Regardless of what role the character may be fulfilling, we break down that experience into two primary components, power, fantasy and play patterns. Power fantasy, they probably mean like a magic a dragon knight and play patterns is like, okay, a mech DK has a lot of dots, like it's focused around dots and burst damage, like aggressive burst damage with a leap is my guess. I think every player has a little bit of different idea of what the setup should look like. Like for me, a stem DK should evolve around poison, whereas for other people, they would like to see it be around like earth themed that's what i read on the forums so it always differs a little bit and it's hard to get it right and my issue or the biggest problem with this is the game is six years old and they're still throwing the game over the like over the head every three months and that that is what a lot of people getting pissed off about because people like to build up their character, work on their build. And then every three months, Sauce comes in and in your face, restart. People are just tired of this. So, like I said a lot of times, I really hope that they actually can get a more stabilized version of like how classes look like, feel like and play like with the next chapter, because that's where a lot of people will try the game again. You can never avoid that some stuff gets changed, but it shouldn't be completely thrown over the head every three months. Power fantasy refers to the fictional justification of your character's power and how it's expressed through the look and feel of abilities. Necromancers draw their strength from death magic as they manipulate souls, flesh and bone. Templars call up on the power of light and the burning sun. Every class should have a clear defined source of power and class abilities should reinforce the fantasies a fantasy through their description, animation, visual effects and audio. When you see a player using a class ability, you should have a little you should have a little doubt which class they are playing and it should look awesome. Definitely true. Again, some classes or some setups do it better. I think Magicka setups do it better than STEM setups because the game was based up on Magicka setups. So I think the the power fantasy and the play patterns are more complete. There has been a lot of changes with this stuff too. So like I remember back in the days I could use take flight on my stamp DK. I could reflect meteors with uh, wings on my stem DK, which felt amazing. And the enemy actually got punished for being Dumbo Chumbo because back in the days you knew, well, if you drop a meteor on a DK, it might come back, right? A lot of people complained about it and now it got nerfed, it's not there anymore and so on. And I think that's also some sort of like they just took away the uniqueness of certain abilities. 
Some people might say, well, it's too overpowered, so it had to be nerfed. I'm more like, well, again, if you knew you were fighting a mech DK or a stem DK, you knew a shooting star would come back with a very high chance. So you did not use that ulti, you used your second ulti. Stuff like that. But again, this is all things from the past. I just hope they actually fig figure it out for good and like just don't like I just don't want sweeping sledgehammer changes anymore. So that's this power fantasy cool. The dragon eye brings flame and fury. Okay, I guess so. This power fantasy, however, should not dictate or constrain your character's role in combat. One of our mentors for Ezra is play the way you want. I think they should just get rid of that. And in this case, it means any class can fulfill any role. Tank, DPS, support, healer. When the game launched, I think this was more meant in a general approach. Overland zones. Because there will always be meta builds. Yes, you can play the game how you want. In overland zones, normal trials, PvP. But will it be as good as a meta build? No, it will be not. There is always a best in slot. To some degree. The question is just whether you care. Whether you're a meta slave or not, right? So you can play how you want. But you will not be as effective as a meta build. That's just how it is. And I don't think that's a problem. I also feel like that tank, DPS, support and like healers, if every class can do it as good, then it's like, why even have classes? It's not gonna work out. Because some classes are simply more DPS focused. Some are more like tank focused. So it's never gonna work out to the same degree. Even now, in my opinion, you can tank DPS and heal on any class. Just not as good as the best in slot setup. And that's totally fine in my opinion. To better achieve this ideal while also maintaining the unique fantasy flavor of each class, all class kits need to include the basic tools required to fulfill each role. To be clear, our goal is for every class to be viable, not necessarily optimal. Okay, here they say it. In any role without heavily relying on non-class skill lines. Currently, a number of class kits don't succeed in this goal, particularly when it comes to stamina choices and healer builds. And those cases are prime candidates to receive additional attention and more significant changes in future update. So, the thing is, if you have a more focused damage class, and you make it more viable with healing now, it can be very dangerous, especially for PvP. So then you have very powerful DPS or damage and healing. It's just not matching up that good. Stamina, I do agree. Some, some setups really don't have a lot of class identity. But I hope this will get better. Like, they changed one of the skills from Stem Sorg, Bound Armaments. It's a start. It definitely fits into the identity. They changed a few morphs from the stamina warden like the the swarm there's now a stamina morph so i actually do like that and, and appreciate the change to that stuff what do you guys actually think about like power fantasy play patterns is that what they should aim for or like how is it set up in other mmos i personally haven't played a lot of mmos before I tried a little bit of WoW Classic, I played Lineage 2, and most of the things what I remember there is, once the game was launched, not a lot of changes were made. So, I think I do understand why people are so triggered, and me included. And every time I read the patch notes from the PTS, it's really hard to not get depressed, <laughs> because it's just like nerf, nerf, nerf. And obviously pisses off people, understandably so. Anyway, let's move on. The second component of class identity focus on play patterns, which are the specific mechanics and behaviors you have to learn, engage with and master to achieve objectives in battle. While healers might have an objective of prevent ally, fro ally health from reaching zero, good point. You can achieve this through several effect, effect behaviors, direct heals, heal over time, damage shields and damage reduction to name a few. Each of these effects Effect behaviors exhibit benefits and limitations that, when combined with a triggering method, make them more or less effective in various contexts. Direct heals. 
For example, can quickly replenish an ally who is low on health, but you have to wait until the ally has taken damage to use it, and risk a loss of cost efficiency if you overheal. Yeah. You can apply the same model of fall to damage and tanking abilities. Yeah. I think they have one of the best combat systems in the game. That's why I still play, obviously. It's one of the reasons. I just really like the combat. Most other MMOs don't really have that. Obviously, there's issues with the game engine, the servers that need to be fixed. A lot of people have really low FPS, especially on console. Latency is complete dog shit. Let's just put it like that. And that's the... I don't see them improving on latency stuff, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. It's more an issue in PvP. The triggering method itself is the other major factor or play pattern since it defines the inputs and you must set it to trigger the effect behavior. Most abilities include conditions related to range targeting, resource type and resource cost. Some abilities such as the Nightblade's Grim Focus and the Sorcerer's Crystal Fragments. Include additional custom requirements. Custom requirements can be very effective for crea creating a unique feel for an ability, but can also easily wander into wander into territory where they feel too gimmicky. Unnecessarily complex compared to abilities with similar effect behaviors. Or misaligned with the power fantasy of the character. Successful ability design demands a healthy relationship between the triggering method and effect behavior. A new design for bound armaments in update 24 rep represents one of our recent attempts to achieve this within the sorcerer's kits for stand builds. So that's actually good. I think it's not easy and they it definitely looks at like the new team has a more like procedure like approach. Because I'm 100% sure Robble just checked out the forum which Fred had the most QQ and then change this class skills a little bit and see how it's next time. These guys actually try to set the stones together, get the vision for setups and then try to change it accordingly. Now the big question is just, is their vision the same as the players? Because it can be very different. Not a lot of the devs play endgame on a really high level and that's definitely a problem they also have very limited resources there's like five guys that work on like combat changes it's not a lot same with the dungeon team endgame content for pv there's like four or five guys that's it so they don't have a lot of resources and having to change stuff every three months is very difficult right like they make changes okay the update went live they already work on the changes for the next patch, so they don't even have time to evaluate things. That's a huge problem. So I think they should tune down these like constant changes. I hope they will do that after the next chapter when they sorted out most stuff. The combination of triggering method and effect behavior establishes the mechanical feel of an ability, and when you string together several abilities in conjunction with core mechanics, movement, attack, block, a play pattern, pattern emerges. These play patterns are critical to reinforcing class identity by differentiating the experience along three axes. Playing the same role with different classes, playing different roles with the same classes and engaging in PvE versus PvP activities. So that's... I mean, ESO has one of the most complex class systems and like or build diversity in my opinion it's very complicated if you're not constantly keeping up with the game if you're new to the game it's really hard to figure out what's going on obviously i'm trying to help with that on arcushq.com with setting up beginner guides and just builds in general to combat this but if you never look on stuff like that or you're not on youtube it's really hard to actually get used to this and another problem that there is, it's like when you only have one character and you really like your character, you don't want to set up second or a third character and you swap between activities, PV, PvP, battlegrounds, it's really hard to swap around. So what I want them to do, and that has been suggested a lot, like different specs. So you can press one button and your champion points, your morphs, your attributes, everything gets swapped in one button. That would also be easily monetizable, right? Oh, you want more specs? Buy them in the crowd store. That would also be very useful for console, because they don't have add-ons, like dressing room. 
So I really hope that we'll actually come along with the next chapter. Maybe in two years. They're really slow implementing stuff, sadly. To temper expectations, it's highly unlikely we will ever reach a point where every class in every role feels equally unique in both PvE and PvP. But it's an ideal we can continue to strive towards as we revisit class kits and skill lines. Totally fine, in my opinion. Now you may be asking yourself how non-class skill lines fit into this theoretically theoretical world of strong class identities. After all, if class abilities are the embodiment of power fantasy and class kits include all the basic tools required to fulfill a role, why would you bother with using abilities outside those kits? The team is still exploring the problem space, but our current thinking is that non-class lines should Fulfill two primary purposes. Jesus Christ, my fucking English. First, they should allow you to fill gaps in your build when your class kit doesn't provide the exact behavior you need or are comfortable with. Second, they should open up the possibility space of your character's build, both in terms of power fantasy and play patterns by mixing and matching from the large pool of abilities. Okay, makes sense. That's a lot of text. What we don't want is to create scenarios where to be effective you feel obligated to fill a majority of your hotbar slots with non-class abilities. Yeah. People choose the class for a reason. People want to play their class. People choose a Sorg for a reason. They don't want to play weapon skill lines exclusively. It's nice to have the option to Get to these weapon skill lines and pick a skill out if your class can't fulfill that certain requirement. That's amazing, actually. It just shouldn't be end up like a stem sword where you have like literally zero class abilities. Oh yeah. Shit, where was I? Yeah, okay. The team's immediate focus on this front is to look at some of the more significant outlier cases where classes are lacking unique play patterns and over rely on abilities outside their kit. <sighs> the aforementioned bound armaments chain. These what are what words are they using? Jesus. As well as the update to the Warren's Growing Swarm Morph. Yeah, okay, these are cool changes. I'm not sure how effective bound armaments is. But it looks cool and it fits to a stem sword. We consider these changes to be stopgap measures while the team evaluates more holistic improvements for each class in the future. We are not yet ready to share details on those long-term efforts, but the team is excited to push, push towards the future when class identities are unique, coherent and satisfying for all players in the role. Cool. Hopefully we have shed a light on how we use the term class identity internally. In summary, we define success as delivering class kits that combine cohesive, cohesive satisfying power fantasies with unique and effective play patterns. I feel like you could make a drinking game here. Every time I mispronounce a word, take a shot. People probably dead after the first paragraph. Anyway. The end result should be the ability to fill any role with any class while retaining the look and feel of that class. You can expect future updates to include changes with this goal in mind. So, a lot of people pointed out developer deep dive. I would more call it the overview. Overview, because deep dive kinda inclines, okay guys, it's gonna get very specific. This is like a new word. Every company uses this now. I don't know why it sounds cool, I guess. Definitely not the right term to use here because you're not telling us your vision, the cl what, cl what the class identity of a stem sorg or like a magic attempt should be. It's more like an overview. <laughs> like, okay, you're evaluating according to power fantasy and play patterns and you're explaining us this, right? I still don't know what the stem DK is supposed to be, or a stem sorg, or like a mech warden. I don't know. I do hope more articles like this will come more specific. And the only worry I have with this is, they just said, they still ha don't have a clue. Okay? The next chapter is gonna be announced soon, so they don't have a lot of time. Now this worries me a little bit, like, oh, 
I really hope they will get their shit together till the next chapter, but if they still don't know internally how classes or setups should look like, is it gonna be finished next chapter? Or do we have to wait another year? Hard to say. And I really don't hope so, because I don't want the game to be 10 years old. And then they're like, guys, we finally finished it. Uh, it's like, it sucks. It's too late. They need to chop these sweeping changes, because most people actually... I talked to so many players, and they just couldn't be bothered anymore. It's like, oh, I just set up my build. Bye. Like, oh, new patch? Read the patch notes, completely depressed, they just quit. Because they don't want to change the builds every three months. And I keep telling people, don't worry. The next chapter, I hopefully by then they will get their shit together. And I hope that's actually right. Otherwise, I have to say again. <laughs> by the next chapter, they will have it. They also obviously have a lot of issues with prioritizing things wrong. Like these dot nerfs on the PTS. If they would actually talk to the class reps more, this could have completely be prevented because 63% is just too much I just that's one thing I really don't understand why they make these sledgehammer changes I made a video about that uh, last time it's like you just buff that stuff and yes it's too strong but why don't you tune it down by like 20% and then see ah oh, it's maybe still a little bit too strong let's tune it down now they nerf it by 63% it's too much most dots are useless now so I'm 100% sure they will buff it up a little bit again but that means they had to touch the things twice. They had to make the changes in the game twice or even three times. If they had talked to the class reps more or even to the... Like... Well, if it's on the PTS, it's too late. The, the changes in the game. But class reps could definitely prevent stuff like that. But if the class reps... Like, I saw the patch notes. I'm also part of the class rep program. And I saw the patch notes when you guys saw it. So I couldn't tell them, like, what the fuck? That's too much. Like, they will be completely useless. Well, I wouldn't have said that because you would have to test it, but I would have come with the sledgehammer arguments like, don't make these changes. Like, tune it down by 20% and then see how it performs. Because if they had tuned the dots down by 20%, everybody would have been like, oh, yeah, they're right. That makes actually sense. Like, no shit. I would actually have been fine with a 20% nerf. No problem. But 63 is just too much. It just it just makes them look like they have no clue. And that's maybe the case. Who knows? But anyway. I talked long enough. What is actually your opinion on this whole like subject? Class identity and how Sauce handles the stuff. I know it's a very depressing topic. But it still has to be talked about. And I like the Sauce. Like they have a more procedure-like approach now and they're trying to get their shit together better late than never i guess i know it's annoying to deal with but we will see what happens next chapter and i will keep updating my builds like always on the website so don't worry about this i will put the article into the description as well alongside with all my other links that i usually have there make sure to not forget to subscribe and hit the juicy like button Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.